by tradition. Hold tight. Is, hold tight, the three point collectors. Next thing, Tottenham are whipping boys for Liverpool. You like to beat us in how long? So look at your face. So when I. 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 Yeah, hey, they, they forget about when the council is going to take the three. Oh, <laughs> for real! When there was a little car park out front. <laughs> Let's talk about sex, baby. <laughs> Let's talk um, about Liverpool. And as much as we can talk about Mane, he's a good player, Salah's a good player. They just not, they're just not the X Factor, bro. Welcome back to another episode of Stoppage Time TV presented to you by Manscaped. You know the spill 20% off STTV code. Get you know the lawnmower 4.0. I, I'm not gonna do the whole maze <laughs> maze breakdown. You know what hey. to do. Get to manscaped.com and use our discount code 20% off STTV. <clears throat> maze is not here today, so we got a special guest in the building. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Brought to you, ex Premier League footballer, ex West Ham, ex Villa, ex Newcastle United striker Marlon Harewood. Thanks for coming on to the show, bro. Yeah, Car you. connoisseur as well. Yeah, yeah. Car connoisseur. Let's, let's, what are you saying, bro? <laughs> all good. All good, bro. Another week, we back. We back. Sorry for the bad audio last week. Yo, we good this week? We good? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. We back in full effect. Saying, hey, we're not happy with production <laughs> <laughs> at <laughs> all, bro. They, they were fuming in the comments. We're not happy with production. I've been getting so many DMs. But listen, let's get into it. Let's get into... This, as we said, it's a special episode, so it's not going to be about the, the Premier League. I mean, we're not talking about Mo Salah today. We're going to be talking about, of course, Marlon Hedwood's career <laughs> and, of course, what he's doing at the moment. So, Fuad, you want to lead? Bro, like, let's let's start right from the top before we get into it's even the... We're going from the top, yeah? The, the, the dramatic... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, early days, <laughs> Hampstead. Yes. Tell us, tell us, tell us how life was starting early on. And your intro into football, how yeah. you actually how, got scouted. How early? Um, do, you, do you know Coms Fields, Kings Cross? No. That's where I started. Um, I used to play for Peckwater Boys. Okay. Um, and the manager there, Kieran Rafferty, he was a scout for Nottingham Forest. Okay. So, and then it started from there as a young kid. He said, do you want to go for trials? He thought I was good enough to go up there. So I was going how up there since this? 13. 13. So I was going up there since 13 every weekend um, and then half term we have like tournaments and stuff and trials. Yeah. And then they wanted me to keep on going 14, 15 and then it got to a stage where I can sign um, professional schoolboy forms. Yeah, yeah. Back in the day, it's like first year, second year yeah. pros. <laughs> yeah. Um, being a scholar um, and then it's just carried on from there. I know, I know, I know. You were one of them thirteen-year-olds like Lukaku. That was, <laughs> yeah, them, them big, them big ones. Everyone else is like this. <laughs> he's, 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 are you thirty? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, um, so even like when you were in the Nottingham Forest, like academy, when you yeah. go into the academy and stuff. What was it even like being in in the academy and obviously transitioning from playing? Like Sundays. And yeah, no, and you're making football. me think now. It, it, back then, it was it was different compared to what it is now. Obviously, our coach now and what the kids get today weren't like what we got Completely back in the day. It's, it's crazy. Um, obviously, the pitches and the facilities now is unbelievable. Back then, it, it was just one of them things. You just had to, you, you see different people from Ireland, Scotland. You just had to be better than them. And when you join in your position, you just had to be yourself and enjoy. That's what my coach said to me, like, just go and enjoy. Um, at the time, I didn't really think how important it would have been, how, how important at that time it would be later on. Because mm, yeah. I just thought like going to play with other top players and you're just enjoying the academy. But then the older you get, you realise this is like a, a big sort of stage. And then you see first team players walking across the other side of the pitch and stuff. And you think, oh, oh I want to be over that side. Yeah. So what you, ha what you have to do to be over that side, you have to work hard and do the things, listen to the coaches and stuff like that. So was yeah. there at any point that early on stage where you thought, look, when was the moment when you thought you could be a first team player? Um. I just think I just think it's just the way I've been brought up. Obviously, my mom and dad live in a two-bedroom flat, um, and it's just the, the, the determination. And 
I just thought I had to. I'm, Mentality. I'm gonna, uh, yeah, Raised I just with. thought I had to. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna do everything I can. Be in, like, if there's another striker, I'm gonna be better than you in everything I do to mm. show that I can be in that place. So yeah. you've got to be better than me. And I think I just had that mentality all the way through until I got to the first team, obviously making my debut at 18, mm -hmm. one of the young ones and being in the dressing room and stuff. I think that mentality got me through to that stage. After you made that debut, you went on a couple loans though, right? Yes, I did. And back then I'm thinking- Did the research. Hey, listen, <laughs> yeah, did some we, research. We broke it down. <laughs> we broke it down. Over here, bro, I'm telling you. <laughs> I it was in Finland, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So back then, tell me what the picture's like, because nowadays you get player liaisons, you get yeah. a loan manager, you've got Dave all Bassett. your players. Don't even remember Dave Bassett? Yeah. Yeah, he was yeah. the manager at Nottingham Forest at the time that wanted me to go on a loan and get experience. Obviously he had a, he had a best good mate or best friend, mm. Keith Armstrong. He was the manager of, of FC Hacker yeah. in uh, in Finland. So he phoned him and he said to me, do you fancy going over there? Cause I, usually you hear the loan spells the of like league one or division yeah, yeah, yeah. one. And when you hear Finland, what you, what's going through your head? I said, I don't know, you know, when I think back then, it's it's a weird one. It's just like going to Finland. He said, I want you to go out there because you're part of my plans. Obviously, all the, the lingo and the chat to make mm -hmm. me feel good about myself. But at the time, I didn't really think about it, going to Finland. But I just thought it's an experience. I'm going to a different country, I think. And then I just went there and enjoyed every minute of it because I went to... Um, the guy, Keith Armstrong Keke, his name was, he he had a great bunch of lads. We mm -hmm. got promoted, um, we won the league, was in the Europa, played in Banger, yeah, traveling yeah, yeah. with them. It was That's crazy. It. So the, there were experiences that I-, I uh, That will help you definitely yeah, as you from... come back. And and then when you come back, I think not in, that was a um, season where they got relegated, wasn't it? Your uh, first kind no, of No, I think when I came back, they got, they was getting promoted. Ah, into the Premier League. Yeah, into the Premier League. Okay. And then, because I, I make, because um, Kevin Campbell done mm -hmm. his back. Ah. And I played up front with Pierre Van Hoydonk, West Brom away. Jeez. That was my debut. Listen, you're so, like OGs. So, yeah. 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 So Listen, free kick specialist. Yes, yes. yes. So you, you, must, know yeah. you know I, your I, stuff, bro. You know your stuff. I don't want to reveal my age, but, but hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was alive them days. <laughs> I remember Pro E. So, yeah. him smiling. He, had, he was the only Listen, player Pierre Van Hoydonk was, was a tech merchant. Yeah, I'm mate, sure it was unbelievable. Because I was his boot boot boy. So to okay. actually play with your with the man that's um, looking after him and Ke uh, him and Kevin Campbell, I looked after their boots, so they don't do that. Because he's a regular Dutch that, international. What's that like sense. now? Like, like you're just talking about boot boy. Yeah. Imagine Phil Foden being David Silva's boot boy. It doesn't. It doesn't, it doesn't happen. These no, don't happen. it don't. No, it doesn't no. happen. Like you, you're, you you work with academies and yeah, stuff. Yeah. Do you ever just look at it like? Like, look at the difference between these it's, guys. It's and an, like, on a like different being a scale. Boot boy for somebody, I loved it. It's like learning your trade. Mm. Like you, 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 you're looking after a pro, and he, when you get to know him, he talks to you. Obviously, I had Kev. Cams was amazing. He like looks after you. He, he, he had the same like big bro. He had the same sort of thing. He had to do boots and stuff like that. So he knew it was all like so Christmas and special occasions. He will bring me because he was sponsored by Nike and he used to give me track suits mm. and mm -hmm. it just it's just learning your trade looking and it's just good. Yeah. Thing, yeah. So, but do you think kids that today. Helps you more yeah, massively. Then do you yeah, think it's just a respect you think it's something factor? that should be integrated <laughs> still to this day? I think so. Mm. I don't know why not, but obviously it's all health and safety know, nowadays, now. but it's just, I, I, that for me was wicked. Learning mm. your trades, getting to be a pro and cleaning boots. Cause some of the lads got big trouble because they're just so, I wouldn't say lazy, but they just didn't take it seriously. Yeah. So, but then when the lads ain't got his boots for the first team, then you know it's serious. Yeah. So then, because uh, Wes Brown told me a story about he had someone and he, and he forgot his boots. I think it was Eric Cantona. And yeah. he, like, he, he got in big trouble over it. Hey, if I got listen, so, Eric Cantona's boots, I'd say, hey, listen. Yeah, so it's <laughs> Give me Gary Neville. Forget it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't want Cantona's boots. <laughs> <laughs> Too much pressure. You don't want that. But yeah, no, I, I enjoyed it, me personally. It's like learning your trade and it, it, it was good. We had to clean change rooms and mm. stuff like that, mm. which, which I thought is just YTS, isn't it? Yeah. But they don't do that and then, anymore. And then at what point, so at Forest, you're obviously, you've come through the academy. They go down to division one. Do you feel like that is now the perfect place to kind of hone your craft? Because yeah. now, now now, you're playing week in, week out. Yeah. You're, you're in the Forest first team. But then at what point do you feel like, all right, I'm the big number nine in the team. Yeah. I'm putting the team on my back. Um, yeah, it's, it's good, uh, good question. Because obviously, you know, you, you, 
making me think back mm. way back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the glory days. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was good because um, they got David Johnson. Mm -hmm. So you've done your research. Yeah. And then Jono was amazn to play with because he, he was a proper out and out scorer. He, he sort of made his career as well at Forest. Mm -hmm. he, he just come alive because we scored like over, I think it was like over 50 goals between us because he for, like, scored 30 goals a season and yeah. I scored like 21, 22. Machine. And we, was, yeah. we had a really decent partnership. So that gave me a stepping stone to go on to West Ham and how to be with strikers. Then obviously I went on to West Ham with like Bobby Zamora, Teddy Sheeran and Jermaine Defoe. So that being with Jono and playing week in, week out, that made me think I'm ready. Mm -hmm. And that ready was, that was an era of two, the front two when it existed. Like now yeah. you've got the one man who does it all. Back then it was like you played with two men mm -hmm. and each man had to get you 20 goals a season or yeah. whatever. Yeah. But just on that move to West Ham as well, because they were in Division One when yeah, they you got moved relegated. there as well. Do yeah. you think like that was a gamble at the time? Because you could have just stayed at Norwich. Um, oh, sorry, Forest. Nottingham, and just yeah. thought, yo, maybe we could nah, see promotion. Or did you think United this is West Ham? Well, I'm I'm right. Right. That's, I'm, I'm, that's, yeah, that's how I was. <laughs> yeah. That's how I was feeling because I had a good thing with my my agent. How did, and how did it come about as well? Yeah, because being a senior pro, uh, uh, those senior pros used to talk to me and said like, agents don't listen to them because mm. they they. Kev used to say to me like if someone wants you they want you and they'll do everything to get you yeah. so I told my agent like don't tell me someone's watching me mm. don't tell me this don't tell me that I don't want to know until we're going to somebody mm -hmm. you go Marlon like pack your bags we're going and that was West Ham he literally said like we're going to West Ham pack your bags Yeah. and then when he said yeah. that that was it was done for me. And then obviously talking to Pards and Pards sold everything, sold me a dream. <laughs> what, what was that Alan relationship Pardew. like as well? Yeah, Alan Pardew, yeah. because like, I feel like West Ham was where personally I, he came on the map for me. And I was like, all right, this, this manager, what was that relationship like with- Yeah, he did. Well, I formed a really good relationship with him. He, he literally said to me like, you're my number one striker to come in. Mm -hmm. um, I see you being up there with whoever I bring in. And um, I will look after you, even if the it's going to be, he literally said to me, it's going to be, I, I know what West Ham's like. Mm. It's going to be a very hardship if yeah. you're not scoring, but I will back you still no matter week what. in week, no matter what. Mm -hmm. And when someone tells you that, you're like, oh God, I'm going to, yeah, what, right? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to go, well, me personally, I'm going to go and do it for you. Mm -hmm. So yeah. when he said that, I was like buzzing. Um, and he, everything about the club, what he said and what he wanted to achieve and stuff like that. So everything he said, he achieved. And then yeah. I was part of that really scoring. I was top goal scorer for West Ham the first year, yeah. then the second year, then the third year. We got to a final every year that year. Got mm. to obviously FA Cup final. Yeah, yeah. we're going to get into promoted. that. We're going to get into that. We did, we did a lot. And yeah. Pards had the formula that he just, he obviously being an ex, ex pro helped him because he knew how to handle lads yeah. that he brought in because some of the lads was like quite got loads of characters and we, we used to go out and party. That was one thing about it, damn it West Ham teams. They always had characters. I always characters. remember that. That's what loads West Ham of characters. Into a couple one of them. You, West Ham is, is, you have to have one Maverick. Yeah. yeah. You have you're to. Like a De Canio, no, Canio a uh, some, yeah. yeah, someone. Yeah, somebody wow. has we to had, be a Maverick. We had loads that yeah. year. <laughs> we had loads. And the dressing room was just on fire every day. Well, well, well give, a, give us a story of like the, the promotion, for, for example, the promotion season where you said you came in yeah. and kind of scored your goals. Give us a story of that season. Because West Ham they, fans, they, they, they still love you. They still like yeah, you. They, 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 they hold you, like you in high regard yeah. for that. West Ham yeah. fans were amazing for yeah. me. I don't, I, I, touch wood, I love them to bits. They, they just made my time there the, the one of the best times in my career. Because mm. um, what we achieved and everything that happened there, it was, it was just decent. But that year was just phenomenal, mate. The players that came in, playing up front with Dean Ashton, mm. Bobby Zamora, Teddy Sheeran, and all these players came in and he was like, Pards are saying this, right lads, this is, we're, we're getting promoted. Mm. We're gonna go to, we're, we're gonna get promoted through the channels of the playoffs. If we get second and it's a bonus, but he literally said these things and the lads was buzzing. But I think what, what sold it, he let us do, he let some of the senior players look after the whole dressing room and stuff. They mm. knew what they want to do. And no micromanagement. Yeah, we looked after ourselves. And if mm. someone was a bad, a bad egg, mm. they literally will tell them like, yeah. fuck up your ideas or 
kicked it out. Mm. That's what because we had enough a, of anymore. So we had we had that in our dressing room, and, yeah. but we we just had some really really good lads in there. And and, and you listed the names there as well in that front line with Sheringham, Zamora. Like that's that's experienced heads. You're coming in there. What's it like week in week out training with them, man? It's wicked, mate. It's Teddy competition. Sheringham. I want to hear about Teddy Sheringham. Uh, Teddy, Teddy he's was somebody that falls under the radar. We talk about English strikers. You talk about is he a ten? Is, he was like a like a ten before a modern, tens yeah, were even yeah, like functional yeah, in this yeah, country, yeah. like. What is Terry sharing him like? Because that's a treble winner, man. That's man, a top striker. Never gets mentioned. He's unbelievable. In Golden football Boots. terms, is just touches left, right. He knows where to be, what to do. He just he didn't have the the. He weren't the quickest of players, but he just he was in the right place at the right time. Yeah. When he's scoring goals, and he, he was just such a, a a person to learn off and talk to. He he actually made me score my first um, when we got promoted to the Premier League. I went like ten games without scoring. Um, and was in training, was training, training, shooting. We do loads of shooting practices because there was loads of strikers there. And he literally said to me, like, you're gonna have to take your time, like, calm yourself because you're gonna go score tonight. So when I, when you get in that position, just take a deep breath and just just slot it. That's <laughs> what he said to me. And then it was uh, Aston Villa at home, and he put me in. Yeah, he put me in with a header, mm. and I saw it come over, and all I was going through my head is just calm yourself, yeah. calm yourself, bring it down, <laughs> and I just slotted Teddy it in. Voice. Yeah. 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 And then just slot it in, and then from then on, you I just went on a score. Yeah, hat trick. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And what's and what's that like? Even as a striker, though, when you go through them droughts, yeah. what's that like mentally as well? Because that can't be easy. It's, it's hard. Scoring goals is your bread and butter. Yeah, it's hard. It is hard. And West Ham, you as you were saying, you were kind of top goal scorer for two seasons or whatever. When you go through a patch like that. How does that knock you back? It does. It knocks you back a lot because you, you're at your top of your game and then all of a sudden you've got a drought and you don't know where that drought's coming from. But the, the, like Teddy said, I guess again, he said mm. the time to worry is when you're not getting in them positions. Because mm. I was getting in them positions, just not scoring or the keeper saving it and stuff like that. So yeah. I, I weren't worried, but it's still an added pressure when you've got the fans getting on your back mm. and you want to win games and you're not winning and you're not scoring. So they obviously look to the striker and yeah. it, it is a, a lot of pressure. But in moments like that, you just do you have to rely keep going on teammates like Teddy to kind of push that you along? Or, or is it like you, from within your family support? Like what do you use to kind of push yourself out of the moment? <laughs> well, that time at West Ham, it was everybody. The, yeah. the team was good. Um, they didn't put any pressure on you to help you, talk to you, make you feel good. Yeah. Pards was amazing. Yet again, he was, he, he, I can't speak highly of him because he made my career at West Ham um, so memorable. He just literally come to me and said like, just keep doing what you're doing. You're doing fantastic. He didn't have to say that. He, he could have put someone else in yeah, yeah. and said, oh, your time's up. Not up, but I'm going to put someone else in to do it. But he just literally kept on going with me, kept on going. That shows he has confidence in me, in my ability and what I'm going to do. So when I did score, I sort of got to be paid in. Repay, Let's yeah. talk about, when you, you mentioned going into the Premier League, of course, from the Championship and what was the jump like? Because of course you didn't score, you just mentioned you didn't score in your first 10 games. Mm. What was it like going up against John Smith? In, then you're going up against John Terry, Rio Ferdinand yeah. and stuff. What was that? Like, can you tell us about that jump in quality? Oh no, it's a, it's a massive jump mm. in quality. No disrespect to any player or person or leagues or something, but it's a big jump because you're going against elite players and they're, they're, they're Unless you're an elite striker, mm. you, you you I don't know how to explain it. Like defenders, you you have to find a different way of what you're used to to try and beat them. Yeah. And so it's like mentally you have to be on your ball all the time because yeah. these defenders they know what they can do to get in front of you mm. or get behind you or get you shooked up or anything. So they they're on a different level mm, of tools. what to do. And yeah, was so. there a defender that when you got to the Premier League you were like okay. This yeah. is this is your this welcome is, to the Premier League. Yeah, this yeah guy, it's probably this the same. Is different. Yeah, all of them. Like yeah. You just said John Terry, Rio Ferdinand, Vincent Company, mm. um, Distan. Like these are, these are players guys. that I I I've, I've like looked at them and think, yeah, come on, I'm ready. I, <laughs> I wanna because I'm I'm yeah. a big guy, so I wanna see how want physical. Yeah, yeah, I wanna see how physical. See how good the duels are between me and you. And if mm. I'm if I'm overcoming you or you're off your game, that means I've won. Yeah. And if I score, I've won. Like yeah. you have to try and stop me from scoring. So I, I used to love them battles. And and I was going to say as well, like coming up in the Premier League, I think there was one season you were saying as well before where you was up there with the top scorers. Yeah. The Drogba's, the... No, you outscored Drogba. 
Are we outscored? Mm. 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 Outscored drug but then, you, know, <laughs> I, 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 you know what? I'm prepared. I, I, you know we're prepared. So I had to write <coughs> down the names. You f- you scored 14 goals that season. Yeah. And you finished below Thierry Henry, Rude Van Nistelrooy, Darren Bent, who was a hot shot at that point. Yeah, he was. Robbie was Keane, Keane Frank Lampard, and Rooney. That, that's, that's certified legends of the Premier League. That's a list. That's the, a list. God, everyone say, else, say, that, say that list again. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, literally. Like, Robert, all these guys, you finished above that season. Like, when you went into the Premier League, as we just mentioned, they're talking about defenders. But yeah. when you went to the Premier League, did you actually say to yourself, like, okay, I'm going to try and outscore Thierry Henry. Okay. Thierry Henry is ridiculous. But yeah. do you know what I mean? Like, did you say to yourself, I'm going to try and compete with these guys in the goal scoring trust? Or was that never really your kind of like no, motivation? No, it weren't, weren't my motivation. My motivation was literally to be, I had a target of 15 goals and that's what I wanted to get. But because mm. if you get into that target, then you're doing well for the team. So I didn't really think about when you think talking saying yeah. them names now. No. I didn't really. Where was the phone then, man? The name not there. It didn't cross my mind. Didn't cross my mind because I didn't want to disrespect any man them or anything like that. It's because it's obviously yeah, it is. But when you say that, no, my my set mind was obviously looking after the team and scoring as many goals as possible. As we're talking about that season, like, of course, that was a season where you were making noise and, of course, you're picking up form. And and, and amongst that season, Alan Pardew was kind of talking about you in mm. England, yeah. talking about deserves a call up, Marlon will be ready, etc. How did it feel f- for you to kind of know that you, you're you in the eye of, like, the English yeah, national team? Yeah, it's, it's big. It's big. As a young lad, when you're growing up, when you're watching, the t- watching all the lads on the TV and stuff like that, and you see how they got there um, then the moments you think, wow, there's, are they really looking at me? It's like, was it's like cliche moment. You hear all the lads when they say oh, how privileged they are to play for England. It, it is one of them moments that you, when someone's got, cause I did get the call. Mm. Um, and it was, it was quite, it's quite funny really. Cause uh, Fia Wilcock, it was between me or Fia Wilcock. Okay. Mm. And obviously they, politics wise they took Fia Wilcock well, when he was 16 yeah and he, they took wow. him and he sat on the bench so I, I don't know why I, I couldn't I don't know why I couldn't go and sit on the bench yeah. I wouldn't <laughs> 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 mind yeah it was Germany yeah, yeah. 2006 yes yeah, so I wouldn't mind to go and sit yeah, on the bench and watch you, him like you Defoe. missed out Defoe missed out yeah. Darren Bent missed out for this for Walcott who went on to have a good career but at, time, at that 16 time 16 years old he didn't even play no he didn't even play yeah what Seven, one day we'll get him on here and we'll <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ask, ask, ask him. Yeah, yeah, ask him. But wait, go on, you got No, I was just going to yeah. say as well, just with the England thing as well, like a couple of years went by and then you didn't get the call, but Barbados yeah. got the call. You didn't take the call. No. Would you, any regrets over that? What was that? Yeah. Was and, then, and, and, and then what was this kind come? of like at that time, are you still, because you, as you're saying, you it seemed like you held England to the standard of like, I, that's where I want to play. Yeah, definitely. And you was holding out for that. Yeah, I was. Obviously, cause, just because of the players, the caliber mm. players that were playing and the, the elite level that they're all at. And I just mm. wanted to be at that stage to, to further my career. But obviously, it didn't go that way. Mm. But um, I was, my business partner, Rick, we was having this conversation the other day, really, about I wish I played for Barbados mm. <laughs> because I, obviously I break did, every couple yeah. of couple of weeks. I know <laughs> <laughs> going on holiday and stuff because I, I was talking to Mikel Antonio. Like I'm, I'm surprised he's not at, for England call up, but obviously mm. now he's with going with, with Jamaica, and, and, which I'm I'm happy for him. He's, he's and doing that's his something thing. We're seeing I think more so I wish and more I'd... of nowadays where a lot of players are going back to play for their African yeah, Caribbean yeah. roots and. I don't know. I just wanted to kind of get your thoughts on if you would have. I wish I did it. I wish yeah. I did it. So and that Antonio's doing it now. I'm pleased for him that he's mm-hmm. done that because obviously he, he should be in the England team mm-hmm. with the, the, the way he's playing mm-hmm. now because he's on form. But he's decided right now, okay, I'm going to go and mm-hmm. show I want to play yeah. for. I think, it's, I think it's similar. Like, I think there's been situations like, like Antonio and you would have played with um, Amiobi. Yeah. He, he was same situation with him, waited for England for a while and then he didn't get the call up. I think when he ended Nigeria. up playing for Nigeria like, at like 31 or something. But is you know when you when you like turn down the the call up from Barbados, mm. is it because like do you have? I know obviously you're Beige, or you're obviously yeah, Beijing, Beijing, but yeah. do you have? Are you connected with your Beijings? Yeah, like, I am. Like yeah, so, a lot. Okay. But it's I think I just at the time my dad was so obviously England playing for England is is massive. Mm. So I didn't want to miss out on that opportunity because really. if I played for Barbados, then that 
situation would have been gone because mm. I would have been Bayesian and that would have yeah. been it. Yeah. So I think I just holding out for England and just trying to, and then obviously I was, I went to Villa mm -hmm. with Martin O'Neill. So I'm hoping that would have pushed me even more yeah. so to, to England, but obviously it didn't go that way. But yeah, I do regret not going um, to Barbados. Mm. Before we even get to Villa though, I want to touch on the FA Cup final. Wait, sure. not just the FA Cup final. Let, what, let's go before that. Okay. How did they get to the FA Cup final? Talk to me. How did they, who you, scored the you, winner you to get into the FA me. Cup final? <laughs> who scored the winner to get into the FA Cup final? There, there we go. You know what I mean? What was that like sending West Ham to the FA Cup final? And that was their first one for... So uh, many years, so man. Long, it had yeah. so much just, meaning in it. What was it like sending them there? Because I mean, if oh, I mean, cult hero just, status um, must have been it's different levels. That's solidified, indescribable, mate. It was just unbelievable. The run up to it, like a few weeks before, you are seeing fans and the games that we were playing, league games, and everyone's getting excited for it, and just everyone was there. So many fans couldn't even get tickets and stuff. So the lads were all hyped up anyway. Um, but I think Middlesbrough. They had a, a final or semi final before then. I think it was so, a UEFA Cup point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. they like played three, four days before. So we was like, oh, we, we've got these. Yeah, like, yeah, we're yeah. going to get these because they're <laughs> going to be a bit tired and stuff. And obviously, you got um, Hasselbank and mm. uh, Down Down in, down in and Down in. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, were, they, were, they were ballers. <laughs> but we, we were up for the fight because we yeah. had a good good team and mm. we'll like let them know that they're in a game and stuff like that. Even Yossi, Benny Yossiu was like on it with oh, down yeah, in. Yeah, you know, was he's there like, as well, I remember. School, yeah. Cause Pards give him a little thing. Yossi, you're on your, he's on your side. So you're gonna have to let him know he's in the game. And the first ball, Yossi went right through him. And then <laughs> he him knew. Let him know him. English <laughs> Premier, <laughs> English <laughs> football, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and that's, that's little Yossi. Yeah. And so, he, cause he was all, he was uh, bought into sort of the West Ham way and how mm. he was, and he was all all about it. And then obviously the, when I scored the goal, um, the, the partnership that we, me and Dean Ashton got, um, he's setting me up because I'm usually doing it the opposite to him. Um, and he nodded it down and it's just practice training session. I had Southgate, mm. I give him the, the arm. So I'm just holding <laughs> him off. Getting brushed up all the time, uh, isn't Holding it? him off, holding him off. And yeah. then literally the ball was bouncing and my chocolate left foot. I was just, there's no practicing training. It was just concentrating on the ball and I just, Hit it so hard, mm, hit, it <laughs> hit it so hard, and hit I just knew out. that was emphatic. You get out. one one chance, and that mm. was my chance, and then and it you, just went and through. You just touched on Dean Ashton yeah. there as well. We what were was, talking about Dean Ashton. We were talking about him. Yeah. He's not yeah, appreciating well. Dean Listen, Ashton. Oh, I said, right. I said Dean Ashton, not, like James B. E. Yeah, there, no, but, don't is say he, what you is say. He, is <laughs> how how good do you think he could have been? Without the injuries and like, yeah. was he? Was he? He was going that way. Dean Ashton okay. was ridiculous. He was bro. going that way Tech to man. be a top player <laughs> and a top goals. English player. Okay, because he he can. Yeah, he's a decent striker. Mm. Yeah, he can finish left, Would right. You play with him one season. Uh, or two. two. I mean, I think. Ashton was barely fit. You can't probably can't remember. He got injured, he got injured no. with England as well. Wasn't he got he? injured with England? Yeah, but he, he was a player. He was. He could finish. Yeah. Decent striker, to be fair. So in that FA Cup final, you guys go 2-0 up? Bro. Is it 2-0 up? Yeah, no, again? bro. Yeah, it it was, first, let's talk was... about the build-up to the final, though. Oh, the now build... you're in the FA Cup final. Yeah. Of course, you, as a kid, you would have watched so many FA Cup finals. That is what English football is really about, yeah. FA Cup final. I had to pinch myself a few times. What was that like? I, had, going I, into I, that? I was pinching myself a few times. Especially going against Liverpool. But, bro, Liverpool are the Champions League yeah. winners at that point. That was, that was the that first. I don't really get butterflies or anything like that, but... That's the first time when I walked out, when I was walking, when we was obviously walking out and lining up, that's the first time it like sunk in, like, hold on a minute, mm -hmm. Florida, FA Cup final. So I was like, and then we obviously shaking um, Prince, um, what's his name, Prince William's yeah, hands. Yeah. And then he's coming around and then like, this is real. Mm. This is happening. <laughs> like, so and then, but, but it, it, you don't think footballers go through this, do you? You don't, no. you don't think no. about like, just seeing You're Prince not, William there, he yeah. would never be at any other game. Yeah. Yeah. So seeing him there, you know, yeah, it's yeah, a special yeah, yeah, occasion. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I never think of it like that, you know? I yeah. just think though you'd be used to it by then. Like, not Prince William. Nah, nah, man. You know you're, not, you're, not, you're not used to that. Yeah. It was sick. So when he came out and then the game, we would start playing. And somehow me and Dino was looking at each other like, we've got these. Like, mm. So then Dino, I think Dino scored the first one. Mm. Yeah. And then who else scored the second one? Kancheski with the screamer, screamer from, the from, half, from the left side. No, I think that was the second half at extra time. 
What was the Someone score? Else. Three two, right? It was no, we went two nil up. Yeah, yeah. So me and Dino at two nil up, looking at each other, thinking. Yeah. So we got, we, got <laughs> we got this. <laughs> we got this. We got this. Yeah, we're scared. So someone, someone, uh, I think Dino, was it home goal? Um, the Carragher score. Get it up now. Home goal. It was. So it. it I, I remember this. See, thing. now you ain't done your research. Now I got you. Now I got you. Now I got you. Wait, hold on, hold on. You're confusing me. I got you. I got you. Um, I think Dino so scored. Carragher a... scored a non goal. Yeah, yeah, so that's just 2 0. Yeah. Dino. Yeah, so yeah. it's and 2 0. Typical Carragher scored. Yeah, so me. Yeah, typical Carragher. Yeah, so me and Dino was like looking at each other thinking, Wow! Yeah, we got this. Mm. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna win there for the yeah. final. <laughs> like, but you didn't uh, know Stephen Gerrard plays for them. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot who's on the other side. <laughs> listen, listen. Half time come, and then it, it, I think I think it was two nil or two one. Um, half time. I think half time it says two nil. Oh, why can't? Because then Stevie G, Stevie G come out the second half. He just put his cape on, and then that was it. Like he turned up. What was Cause it? Because it was Cisse. Yeah. Cisse scored the first one. Yeah. Because he changed his boots because he was wearing two different color boots. So I think he, half time, he put he, his he normal boots on. on the drip mm. Yeah. <laughs> Trust. And then it, it went 2 yeah, 1, 2 2. two. One time, yeah. Then it went 3 2, 3 all. When you see that oh, Konchevsky goal, you must That's think, when you said, we've won. All right, we got this. Yeah. It must be now Definitely. confirmed we got this in the bag. Big time. I was I was buzzing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's coming in. But then I think I, I, I injured myself because I did my fifth metal tarsal. I broke my foot. Damn. And then we, we've done all the subs. So I couldn't come off. Um, and then it's just moments and the flashbacks in the game. So I think someone went down and then they threw it back to Scaloni and then Scaloni weren't thinking. I don't think he would knew what he was, he yeah. was doing. It was just obviously we're winning three, two. So you just, I don't know. Well, you don't just cause it's, it's it, tired. It, we it's tired. Yeah. Mm. He booted it and then it went to their player, went to the left, went to the right. There's someone chipped it in. And then it's just bouncing back to Gerard. Normal people, normal players will get the ball <laughs> under control and put it wide. This guy said he was tired no. and he just ran up and smash it. I've never That's seen my, the ball the best goals Bro, hover from the ball. It's like probably 40, 30, 30 mm. 40 yards. Like just like, it was hovering, just a clean hit. Just hovering. No matter what angle you look at it from, it just looks crazy the way that Chris That moves. must have been that moment when it went in the back of the net. Right. You've been saying I could have okay, been from a different that point. The deflation must have been uh, unreal. different level. Unreal, mate. It's just changed the whole all the lads. Does mm. that does that it just, affect it going into Yeah, mate. Extra time. Yeah. Because yeah. then you're just sweating after that. Literally, because they they had like the up he he just got another boost. All the players get a boost, mm. free free. Because are you lot thinking so, of Istanbul last year as well? <laughs> because <laughs> You saw that because yeah. it's the same Liverpool yeah, team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gerard sort of again, you're all of them. Same sort of situation. We're the next ones. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Same situation. We're about to go down in history. Yeah. Again. <laughs> <laughs> Gerard, Gerard, Gerard got two. Like obviously Istanbul, we call it Istanbul Champions League. But then the FA Cup final, that one is the is called the Stephen Gerrard final. It's and so arguably, really... if you want, you can call the other one. So what's it like playing against someone like like Gerard? It's hard. It's mm. hard. <laughs> it's hard. It's this. Obviously. At the first half, um, Nigel um, tamed him a bit, mm. a bit, because obviously in second half he came back and <laughs> yeah. turned it on. But Nigel did a good job in the first half, what he needed to do. Um, but it's so hard to deal with players like that because he is one of the elite players that mm. you always talk about, the top three midfielders mm. in the country. And for a player like that, it, it's, it's, it's hard, isn't it? You, you can't really, you just have to do your best and hopefully your best takes care of that. Yeah. I mean, that final, honestly, that was, like, I'm a United fan, but when I saw that, I was like, boy, listen, I celebrated. I can't lie. Yo. I can't lie. I celebrated for Gerard. You must have drowned in sorrows. <laughs> in a lie, bro. That was too bad. I had, to, I had to celebrate that. It was oh, too wow. crazy. But closing on, on like your kind of West Ham kind of spell, mm. how did it go? from such a positive season, yeah. such a time, getting them to the FA Cup final, FA Cup, to then the next season, you only score three goals in that campaign. Yeah. And then your time at West Ham started comes in. How did it go from so high to relatively quite low? Yeah, I don't know. It's a good very, very good question. I don't I don't I don't really know. Obviously I'm a, I'm my only person. I don't like to blame other people, but I'm myself to blame. Um 
there's so many elements that I could have done better. I could have pushed myself even more because you always can work harder. You always can learn more. Mm. Um, I think I probably just got a bit complacent. There's so many things, um, change parts, change different formulas, different mm. teams. He's obviously, we used to call him Mourinho because everything Mourinho used to do, we used to try and practice and <laughs> little things, little things like <laughs> that. Jokes. So, and then we had the uh, Carlos Tevez and Javier coming oh, in and, there's just so many things that changed. And obviously we was in Europe as well. So we were playing Thursday nights and then we have a game Sunday. It's so many games, players, mm. players want to play, players want to leave. It, mm. it just, it just come to that sort of stage when we did so well and everyone wants to be part of it. Mm. And it's like, it gets a it bit, it gets, gets yeah. everything just gets on top. Yeah. And, um, but no, I, I blame myself for it. I, I, I can't really tell you why, what happened. I think there's just a lot of stuff that at the time, plays a part of it, but at the end mm. of the day, it's, it's still me to I have to go and prove myself that I can still be an elite player and try and score as many goals as possible. When you saw, like you mentioned Tevez, mm. when you saw, cause that's still, in my opinion, the, the two most random Bravo. transfers we've ever seen in this, in this league, like yeah. Tevez and Mascarano come to <laughs> West Ham. What was it like in the dressing room? Just hearing, first of all, this third party players are coming and yeah. this, this Argentinian, like, you, we, you don't you know, know who they are. They were pretty yeah, yeah. much unknown players at yeah, the, at the we time. Don't, like, what was that like, especially as a as, striker? As pros, like, we don't really, nah, we, as pros, we don't really think like that because mm. players come, players go. You don't mm. really think, you just welcome them in because we didn't even know, at the, at the time, we didn't even know who they was. Yeah. So they come in this dressing room, we've got two of your lads, look after them, which we always did. All the lads look after people that came in, make them feel comfortable and, and to enjoy the time at West Ham. Yeah. Um, so at the time, we didn't really think. And then as weeks go on, you you hear what they're all about, what's happened and everything about it. Mm. And then you see them train and how, how good they was. Mm. Then you understood <laughs> where, what caliber of player they are. Did um, you see that early on? Yeah. Bro. Like, because Tevez was notoriously a bad trainer. For bad me. trainer. But, <laughs> yeah. Bad bro, trainer. Who's that? I, mean, I want to hear yeah. you right. that. What was <laughs> bad, like training? Bad. Bad. Just bad. Touches. <laughs> everything. He, he, he used to wear them old um, tempos. You know the old tempos? Yeah, 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 yeah. But he used to wear his socks rolled over him. It was okay. weird. And he just like, lace it, laces undone. Like ankle protector type. Yeah, it's just so, it just didn't, weren't bothered. Yeah. It was just like, he had his top like this all the time and just really just not, not bothered. Mm. And H Javier was the opposite. He was just like left, Warrior, right, touch, it. bang, all around the pitch, flicking it around people. Mm. And he, he was a baller to be fair, mm. you but could, could tell. could you see even despite the bad training that Tevez's ability? Yeah, in, in games. Cause in games, he just used to turn it on. Mm. We're like, where, where did that come from? Mm. But you can see the the way he was and his engine and little Tev, he's so small, but obviously when you're a small player, you have to have something about you. And he did have that about him in mm. the sense of, he, he was quick, quick and his touches, he was strong, he could finish. Mm. You could tell that he was that caliber of player. In that, in that moment, you know, you get a lot of, you hear a lot of stories about dressing rooms yeah. and when people, unknown players come and when there's too many signings, you've seen it with stuff like QPR and a lot of clubs that they make a lot of signings or they make that one signing which can be seen as like a bad egg or whatever yeah. and it derails everything. Was it in a way a little bit frustrating? Was there like murmurs around the camp? Because when Tevez and Mascarano come through, mm. You guys were having a bad season that, that yeah. whole year. It was a relegation yeah. battle. And Tevez, let's be honest, until the last couple of games, he didn't do anything for the whole season. No. So were you guys kind of, was there kind of like finger pointing at all? Like, oh, it's these guys come in now. We were Europe, you wait for cup last no, year. These well, men come in. <laughs> yes, again, I, I can back pros because obviously from the outside looking in, there's so many opinions, so yeah. many things like, but we don't think like that. We've got a job to do. Sometimes it's fine line sometimes when you lose a game mm. and you try and rectify that on the pitch. No one knows about stuff like that because you, the luck's just not going your way. So uh, they were at West Ham at the time, there mm. weren't no finger pointing, but obviously when you've got the press yeah. talking about stuff and things that's coming out of dresser rooms and stuff like that, it, it's hard because like lads are probably just talking to their friend and then them friends talking to their friends mm. and it just, it just gets out because um, we, I, we didn't have any lads in that dressing room that was going to people and telling them, talking bad mind and bad mm. stuff. But um, some of the lads was going through a bad time. So uh, 
obviously they're going to be talking to people and try and help themselves, agents and stuff like that. It just it was just a bad time, mm. and like you just said, there was so many finger pointing. But I think that was from the outside, mm. and the, the, obviously people thought it was inside, but we, we weren't like that. We were just yeah. trying to rectify the situation, which it did because there was like a, there was a massive brawl um, within our dressing room mm. on the Charlton game. We played away at half time. Um, there was a lot of finger pointing at that time. Oh. And then after the game, we just had a massive fight um, and ironed out a few who, who things. Who got it? Who got, who got it cracking? <laughs> who got the scrap it's cracking? A, a, hey, I don't know who was trying to swing Mar Marlon. I ain't uh, swinging yeah. Marlon. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean. Yeah. Coca. <laughs> no, 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 no. I had to. I had to stand up and like hold a few man them to yeah. to, to, to stop to to because it was it was proper heated mm. and a lot of finger pointing, a lot of lot of uh, people bringing out people's names and mm. trying to come them. But then um, it, it was a massive ball and it just got all ironed out there. And then we didn't leave the stadium till like hour, two hours after mm. from the dressing room, yeah. just talking and ironing it out. But then we went on an unbeaten run after that for yeah. like 10 games. And obviously Tevez was the yeah, main yeah. one, Man yeah. United, he mm. got the goal to- No warning what happened Sheffield by that. No, cause you look, mean. Yeah, big time. <laughs> we rested our players, <laughs> didn't it? For yeah. the final Bro, game. To this day, he still yeah. fumes about still it. To this day. You guys had it like, so I was about to touch on that actually. You guys had a kind of a close knit group in yeah. terms of you, Gabidon, yeah. Rio, Coca, yeah, yeah. Anton Ferdinand. Yeah. Am I missing anyone? Chesky, Even Dean Ashton. Yeah. All of us. Were you guys like, was it that team spirit that guys that gave you that great escape? Yeah, mate, definitely. I don't think it'd be anything else really, because Curbs came in um in his old school methods. I at love first, it. first, I love first, it. first, at Charlton it worked. Wait, it, 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 at Charlton it worked. At West Ham it, it went it, south. It, 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 it weren't my cup of tea at the really? time. Yeah. But when I look back, we had this conversation with um, the other day, but when I look back at it, what he was doing worked maybe he didn't realize it was going to work because he yeah. was upsetting a lot of people no. at the time, a lot of people. And that's where that fight start, started out because he was <laughs> like a lot of finger pointing and, and then, every, then someone went for him and went for everyone else. And it's mm. just like massive brawl. And I think he realized that we cared. So he had to change his method of the way kind of his old school. Up. Yeah, to mm. suit us. And then obviously he done a bit of apologizing and everyone started and then that's when he- And you said there, like, like, that's a tight knit group. You said there's a bunch of characters in there. Now on the pitch, of course, that's good and fun. Yeah. But what's that like off the pitch as well? Cause there must be bonding. The, I know that the, man would party. The, the nightlife must be nuts yeah, bro. as well. We I went know out, like, what was that listen, like? Listen, we went out three, pitch. four times a week for, right. <laughs> for the games <laughs> on Saturday. <laughs> You can't do that nowadays. Like, and but that was is, yeah. good. That was good team bonding. We like, had our groups. We used to text each other. We'd meet in out. There was like probably about six, seven man out every day of the yeah. week. Like we're going partying. You remember old 10 rooms mm, and China Mahiki whites and, and stuff like that. And <laughs> all that kind you of thing. remember this. The <laughs> thing is, I, c I could talk I about this now. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah, nice. Yeah, but this is the thing. And that but, even back then it was pre-social media era though. Yeah. So, so it's this, it was decent. You didn't have anything. No one knew what you was doing. But at the same time, we enjoyed ourselves. And then when we came into training, we knew we just had that 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 mm. that, that group was we all together. Yeah. We were play, yeah, playing with each other. You see, where you've got your West Ham boys as well, though. I wonder sometimes, like when you're going out after the games, yeah. are the Chelsea boys there as well? Yeah, are the United boys? Yeah, there? yeah, they are. It's all a, mm. it's a Premier League link up. Yeah, basically. yeah, because we we have our table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pulling that one, we're yeah, giving yeah, you, yeah. we're giving you up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 bring the tape, bring the balls, bring the balls. <laughs> Seriously, it was like that. It was like that. that Literally nuts. like that. Like we had Imagine our table being, over I there. Like was... Arsenal boys were over there. Mm. Chelsea boys were over there. Was there? Was, there, like was there? was there? Is there battles? Like nah. you yeah. might, might bring a bottle. No. Re up, re up, re up. Bring more, bring more. Was there never competition? The flames, the... Was there never competition between like, like? Yeah, was actually, surely that's that so funny because I never, I never really seen it like that. But mm. it was like that. Yeah, so if we be. bought something out, obviously all the flames and stuff, yeah. right? then someone else would bring something out. Yeah, then yeah. someone else would bring something out. Then yeah, it probably was like that. But I didn't really think about it like that. That's funny. Imagine if we were just regular brothers in the rave and you're just seeing all of that going on, brother. I'm exiting. I'll be saying I'm, I'll, I'll be saying I'm Marlon's cousin, bro. I'll be telling the guy I'm like, Marlon's cousin, trust me. Yes. No, yeah, you guys were part of the, one of the great escapes. So that must have been a, 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 great, yeah. a great moment. It was to good. Be a part of. It was good. It was good. Good to be part of, really, because um, a lot of things had to change that season, and we we did it to to survive. Mm. And you moved on to. You, you wanted to get into the villa run, just right? the villa i wanted to touch on yeah. as well like you 
with Martin O'Neill, what was your relationship like with him? Um, because he's someone who I've yeah, spoken with at, Gabby. He's he's always had interesting. He's had weird relationships good, with people, or really bad relationships with people. So yeah, I, I literally always, like that. It's it's one way or the other. It's he's polar. fiery, isn't it? Very yeah. fiery. Who Martin? Like, Martin O'Neill. No, he's not fiery. He's not. He don't talk to anyone. Uh, you know when you're playing uh, when he says morning to you yeah. okay so when you're walking through like through the villa because the villa trailer ground is amazing and like when you go through the, the 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 main reception and if you see him come down the stairs from breakfast or something and he says morning you're like what am i playing mm, you just yeah. knew because he doesn't he's not really a person to <laughs> to talk to somebody like but when he talks to you you know you're playing because mm. he was very strange in the way he's, his methods was and stuff like um, he'll name the team before the game, like an hour before the game. And he's got like 25 man deep um, sitting there all around and we're all waiting to hear our name. And he'll like go through the names, literally. And then and then the subs. And then he'll just walk out. <laughs> so it. yeah, Stone cold. <laughs> that's it. And then and there are lads that are not uh, in the team just like, okay, see you later. Yeah. And just get out. That's nuts. And you went on a couple of loan spells as well. Newcastle. Yeah. They've had a big takeover. What do you think yeah, no. of that now? It, it, well, it's hard, isn't it? For for loads of the players there. It's hard for Brucey because mm. obviously, hopefully, because he, I, I love him. He's a good guy. He's a good manager. But it's, it's one of them it's things. Takeover, really. It's part and parcel of the game now. It is. Yeah. It is. And it's It's hard to take, really. But it's good for the club and it's bad for individuals mm -hmm. that there and how they're going to do things. Hopefully they look after the players and the manager, but you can't really see that because when teams come in, they want big names, mm -hmm. big players. And uh, that's, that's, I'm with the that's money. I'm seeing Callum Wilson tweeting. In, that's like, the way it's going to go. Like, this is good. I'm thinking, yeah, yeah, brother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's just trying to secure yeah, that hard. spot. Yeah. 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 But it's, it's one of the things with the money they're coming in, it's it's going to be a lot of change. Do you think, yeah. how long do you think it takes for them to kind of achieve the targets? Because we've seen these types of takeovers with Chelsea, with yeah. City, but then we've seen it with um, Wolves as well, where yeah. it's been a more measured approach with Leicester. So this is going to be different level. It, this is what I'm saying. I I don't know how these are going to whether they're going to go super. Yeah, it's hard but... really because all all the good managers are taken. So and all the good players are taken, mm. and obviously they've got a lot of money behind them. Are they going to going to change the football game to a whole different level to bring yeah. players in? Because they're going to have to to attract the players and bring them in manager wise and mm. stuff like that. So they, they've got a lot of work to do. Yeah. And they, obviously they've got to get a decent manager to do that in, within the club, to love the club. Because obviously the Newcastle fans were amazing as well. Obviously mm. my time there was was unbelievable, but they, they ain't going to just take someone coming in and ramsacking it and not yeah. treating yeah. it with, with respect or so they, they're going to want they're going to want to win stuff, but at the same time, they want to do it the right way. Yeah, 100%. And I think it, it'll be interesting to see kind of how they progress and develop it because yeah. even with City, it wasn't a one season, no, one year type no, of thing. It, it took two takeovers, mm. let's be honest. But you're talking to get about them. Pep here, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and then the, it took Pep getting how, there for how them to yeah. be respected like they are now because the before Pep, they were always looked at a little bit one eye yeah. sideways type of thing. So, But with talking of all this big money, China... Yeah, you went there, and I this know, was, was before so the big money times. Guangzhou. How, how, how did that move come yeah, about? It was Guangzhou, yeah. And what Guangzhou. was what, what was your experience out there as well? My experience is unbelievable, man. Yeah, yeah, it was unreal. You enjoy everything. Never... Yeah, bro. <laughs> hey, <laughs> vibes, man. Good I'm, vibes, hey, man. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I had, had, I had a good did. time. I had a good oh, time, yeah, bro. We had Carlton Cole come on here, and he said, "I'm just, I'm just a vibes I'm man." Vibes, I think we got another vibe. You man are cool. You man are close. Yeah, CC's my boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vibes FC. They were doing away days recently as well. Yeah, because we're me and him obviously do the ambassador. Yeah, so we do the work together. But China. No. How did how did that even come about? Um, Blackpool. At New, I was at, at Blackpool at the time yeah. in the Premier League. Then we got relegated, and I think the the, the agent um, she was West Ham um, a fan, mm -hmm. and she found out that I was um, coming to the end of my contract, and she just said to me, "Do you fancy going to China? Because I've got an agent looking for a striker that's uh, the team that's just got Guangzhou that's yeah. just got relegated, yeah. and they're looking to go to back." to uh, the Super League. Mm. And I said, oh, China. And yeah. then, then, she sh then she showed me the numbers and I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was like, so was oh, the okay. healthy then as well? Sorry? Were the checks healthy back then yeah, as well? definitely. All right. So she showed me that and I, I thought, oh, okay. Well, I have to talk to the family and mm. uh, 
see what happens from there. And then the family were like, said, go get that bread, yeah, blood. Yeah. Yeah. How long was you there? But I was coming from my end of my career. I was there for a year. Okay. But their season's like, uh, ends at the end of November. Mm. It starts like in, I think it's May. And then it finishes in, mm. in, in, in like November. Okay. Right. When, when It's actually good to, like, it's refreshing to hear <laughs> somebody just admit I went there for money. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, you hear yeah, people talk about China. I was coming to my end of my career. Like, obviously, it's, it was weird. The Blackpool... Mm. And going down and then I was like, where am I going to go next and trying to enjoy? Because obviously you want to be in the highest uh, highest um, Le- level mm. as possible. And I was in the Premier League, did well with Blackpool the first few games, got injured, did my hamstrings and I was out for a few games. Um, but then, because I was, <laughs> to be fair, actually, I was on the way to um, uh, Turkey. I can't mm. remember the team. It weren't Galatasaray, it was the other one. Philip Fenerbahce. Yeah. And then uh, Oli gave me a call. I was going to. I was literally on the way to the to the airport, and he phoned me up and says, "Oh, Marlon, you don't want to go there. Come, come and help me at Blackpool in the Premier League next mm. year." And, and I thought, wow. yeah, in, Holloway, in, a, in Holloway, this can sell you I anything. Tell you, yeah, man, I'm telling you, bro. So <laughs> it was it was mad, but it was like two weeks before the season started. Yeah. So like, I, I made obviously made my debut, scored two, scored twice, mm. and then we played Arsenal away. Um, obviously, we put, it was a hard game. We lost that one. And I think I did my hamstring. And then obviously from there, because I, I pre-season was lack of, and then it was just hard from there, um, trying to obviously with Blackpool to keep them afloat in the Premier League. Mm, I mean, that Blackpool team, that was a little exciting team for a little bit. Yeah, it was. Remember Charlie, Charlie Adams, Adams that. hitting screens. Yeah, Charlie halfway, Adams yeah. whipping corners like DJ a man. Campbell, and all that. Uh, DJ Campbell, yeah, I, I remember. DJ I remember, Campbell, I remember yeah, that team. I remember yeah, that, yeah, 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 yeah. So in terms of like, you mentioned, you went to China because, mm. of course, financial reasons and stuff. At this point, had is that when you had started thinking about post career, like what are you gonna do? Were you always into cars? Uh, yeah, as a, as a young lad who ain't mm. into cars, I ain't gonna lie. I just like yeah. where, whatever looks nice. I can yeah, get gal exactly. in the car. So I was like, <laughs> 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 never gets A to B. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't care about the engine. No, nothing. Nice, it goes. <laughs> no, it's it's funny you say that because I obviously life after football I weren't really thinking about it at the time mm. um but it was because uh my company ac13 has been running like 15 15 years now mm. um so I, I just had some bad experiences with cars um pain trying to get rid of it started a family and i had to get rid of a couple of cars and i couldn't get rid of it paying a lot of money to get out of it mm-hmm. um and obviously in nottingham i had a good friend that i was um when i was the time i was there we formed a good relationship and he wanted to leave his job and i said well then we just set up a, a car company mm-hmm. and help lads out as much as and possible. this is why you're playing this is why I was playing, mm. okay. um, not knowing that it will be successful mm. um, now. So it, it's like a good omen, touch wood, that it's happened for me. Yeah. But I do recommend, like, obviously, lads today, pros, to think of life after football because your life does start, no matter how much money you make, when you get to 35, 40, you're going to need something to do, keep it going. Because mm. I, I love my business now and what I do, um, my team, my, teammates can say my teammates my <laughs> my business partners who work me it's just so enjoyable yeah. mm. helping people day to day with their cars and their lifestyle and stuff like that. it's 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 enjoyable and i love doing it plug yourself plug yourself you, who's the people you've kind of i saw you got rooney okay <laughs> go walk yeah. on it yeah, plug yourself but, yeah we, we, we obviously being a, a pro it, it's nice because I, I i try and give that um that, that experience to them instead of going into dealerships and stuff like that. I try and personal, type. personal. Yeah. So they, cause I, I, sometimes they don't want to be known where they go in and stuff. It's not easy to get the right deal when they're going into dealerships and stuff like that. So we, we take it out of their hands and do everything for them. I, I need a, I need a, I need a GLE. You said, 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 you <laughs> no, but so yeah, that's that's how it, it and, come across. And, and just the good thing I like about that as well is what you're saying you're passionate about. It started off as almost like a necessity to you. Yeah. So it was like, do you know what? I need this if anything. And then it starts off as a business, and then you realize there's actually a space and a market for it. Yes. Just is that like, what you feel like now? Is what's keeping it going. It's it doesn't even feel like work to you at this point. No, it don't. You actually, actually yeah. right. It doesn't. But obviously, it is work. I've got and I've got um. 
staff that I need to look after. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously me and my business partner, Rick, he, he, we do a lot of the, the VIP side and we've got um, a normal standard sales side where we do used cars and all the rest of the wrapping and the body yeah. work. And we can, we literally help everybody now, not just from celebrities, we, for we'd help Joe Bloggs in, and try and give them the best service as possible. So kind of expanded yeah, into kind of new areas. Giving it to everybody. 100%. And you I know, think the, oh the longer you kind of go on, the more you obviously will. Yeah. But yeah, go on. You know, you mentioned um, you obviously had issues with cars, like in terms of letting them go and, and yeah. stuff like that. Like when some when we have a athlete on here, we always ask like for advice purposes yeah. for the players that are coming through now, what were you blowing your money on? When you had that, was it cars? Was it clothes? Like you coming in the J's? Yeah, <laughs> you know, like, I'm seeing the drip. So I can imagine like when the weekly wages was rolling in. Yeah, what were you spending your money on? And would you? What would you recommend people not to do? Oh God, I'm not recommend not to do. You have mm. to. You have to enjoy yourself because you only you only live once. Um, but. Uh, just look after yourself. Um, you can spend whatever you want, but make sure you got a uh, money aside to do to to look after your your long term future instead of just thinking of short term. Because mm. um, the, the the Jays and everything they'll, they'll mm. still be there, but just think of your family and who you wanna how you wanna live after your footballing career. Yeah, I think that's super important for the kids nowadays. What's, yeah, massively. What's 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 the, the craziest car you've worked on? Well, we've worked from from Bugattis to Fiat Puntos and stuff like that, but we do the Mercedes V classes, right? The the the, the vans, yeah. Um, and they have one extreme to another. People have had businessmen have printers in the back, computers and coffee machines and mm. all sorts of things in might, it. Might be worth getting into like a West Coast custom type yes, YouTube channel. Yeah, you know I mean, mm, like exhibit. We said, yeah, I mean. get my right. <laughs> Yo, my, my, car, my car over here. Yeah. How do you use a bit my ride? I'll tell you. If we're doing customs like, like that, hey, might be worth it. Some extra content there. Yeah. <laughs> but um, what was just throughout your career as well, though? You've you've seen a lot of players driving mad cars. As yeah. Well. What yeah. was some of the best and worst cars that you've seen? Because who was the one? The, as who as the, the, well, I don't think they're the worst cars. Um, it's just what they do. Mm. Um. To customize it, yeah, yeah. customize it. So, so yeah, because we like we like the customization, but because obviously satin black, matte black is obviously the color that everyone. It looks looks yeah. sick. It looks decent, mm-hmm. but we do like people that comes in with color and looks like we've had um, like a, someone coming with Q7, and he wanted to wrap it like a reflective purple. That it, when you look at it, a different, it goes to a different color. Obamian oh, loves a lot of that, isn't it? We yeah. love mm-hmm. stuff like that, um, like oh, Obamian cars, chrome like colors and stuff. Like yeah. we, we love colors like that. It's mm. like it's exciting when it comes out, and it's like wow, that looks sick. Because yeah. obviously, the satin black and matte black looks good. Um, obviously, you have it all blacked out, and it looks alright. But we we love color in our in our who, office. Who, who would you say was the worst offender for worst car you've seen in any dressing room throughout your worst career? car? What what yeah. kind of thing you're talking about? Worst car? There's no worst cars um, in dressing rooms because I don't know. I don't know how like, else to put it. Well, yeah, worst car. Not worst car, but like the car worst, where, that's, you that's thought, bad, man. where you thought that's a bit excessive. That, that That's a bit OTT. Yeah? Like what, OTT, too big or? Too much done on it. Um, Or has God. it been? If there ain't, mm, don't have to be. Uh, I think Anton was the worst, really. Because mm. Anton was like, literally three weeks later, he'll have his brother's car. Or have something <laughs> similar. Bro. That, that's that's, what, that, that's what we used to call him, Frio. Yeah. <laughs> Cause, yeah. Cause like three weeks later, Anton will have it done. Yeah. So literally it will come in a be- baby baby blue Bentley or yeah. Chrysler or he, he just used to come in in mad, mad cars, mad colors and stuff. And I was speaking to your managers beforehand as well. Cars yeah. ain't the only thing you're into as well. What you might be dabbling into music soon as well. I'm hearing. Oh, the, the mm. Capo, yeah. And and do you want to touch on Dom's food, food mission? mission as well? Oh, they're touch the charity as well. Well, you've done some research, hey, bro. I it's nice. We do our it's homework good. over do some here. Proper homework. Proper <laughs> homework. It's nice to hear. Like oh, um, Dom Food Mission. Yeah. This is a um, there's a charity that I've been involved with for the last four years now. Um, it's uh, a charity in Hastings. 
they uh, feed the homeless and unfortunate families and kids and stuff and they've been doing it and I've been trying to get down once a month just to go and feed feed people that can't afford to mm. to, to eat and stuff and it's, it's it's quite it's rewarding and and heartfelt as well because you see the people and how they they're so grateful that you're you're doing it and it's just my chance of giving back and yeah and um, the guy that does it dom he he's amazing the the, mm. the passion that he's got to try and help people and i just wanted to be part of that and with the last year and, and a half expend. as well yeah it's been how mad crazy everything's and been. he's been it's... doing that throughout the pandemic helping people and it, he's just anything i could do to to help him i try and try and help him and try and get it out there to loads of people to give him even more help no that's good man. you said you're getting into bless. the music as well you're just doing a few dabbling into music yeah we just, just got a couple of lads we, we yeah. get a lot of messages from people asking them to help them which is mm. nice and we try and do as much as we can and, and uh, yeah, like I say Rick my business partner he's on the lifestyle side so mm. we sort of and he's had this mate uh, Capo's rang us and we've listened to a couple of his songs and mm. he's he, we think he's sick so mm. we're just trying to help him to push him on to the next stage and as much as we can as possible because yeah. he's he's had a, a couple he's had his album out recently and it's sick so we're just mm. trying to keep pushing him doing the music videos and try and see if someone would take a little mm. gamble next oh, year's man next so year's intro decent. sound Stop yeah, yeah. Intro, man. <laughs> get a little 16 from <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um so that's just coming off our lifestyle company as well because yeah. we have an hd13 lifestyle where we took it from another level like insurance and looking after people's lifestyle nice. investment so they can help the lads to invest their money so yeah they, like for long-term purposes life after football because like it, i think it's so important it's, it's good that you guys like touch on stuff like that mm -hmm. just to put it out there really yeah. because it's it's nice to see we as we like we're speaking about stuff when we're out there as well mm. like when we have people on after we've spoke about their career we've had their fun we we, we like to just speak about it's kind of the best peak players you've yeah. played with along oh, them type of stuff. So you've gone question, there, you've gone there. Yeah, I've got to go there now. My I thought that was just a conversation <laughs> for outside. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. <laughs> so we bring that into the camera still. <laughs> so I, my first question to you, like it's kind of trivial. Who's the best player you've played with oh, and man. best player you played against? Yeah, no, see, now you, you put me on a the spot there because mm -hmm. this, this goes out everywhere. So I've, yeah. I've, I've, <laughs> I've, I've played against a, a lot of good players and I, I, I speak very highly of the players I've played with because everyone's, everyone's good in their own way. Mm. But I think played with is what he's gone on to do in his career. Mm. It's got to be, it's got to be Javier Mascarano. Okay. What, it's gone to... Barcelona mm. and plays centre half and he's only like five foot. Yeah. You've got to be <laughs> some sort of player yeah. to, to, to do time. that. And obviously going to Liverpool mm -hmm. and then gone on from there. Mm. Like he's probably one of the best players I've, I've played with. Mm. Um, just what he's achieved in his, in his footballing yeah. career. And best player you played against? I know you- It's got I, to be Ronaldo. Cristiano? Straight away, yeah. Because yeah, okay. literally, yet again, yeah. what he's gone on to do in his career and how he's done it. Because yeah. the season I played with him, That's when he him and Rooney yeah. was just on- I seen that unfortunate picture of you behind him. On top, what, from scoring? Yeah. Yeah, 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 there you go. And Marlon's happy. <laughs> and I was like- <laughs> <laughs> You've definitely done your homework, bro. <laughs> There's some homework there, done. boy. That's, that's good. That's I good. Know, I know you mentioned before that um, Thierry Henry. Yeah. You said Thierry Henry. Was he your idol? He was, up, mate. Yeah, but definitely. What was that like? Because I'm, listen, oh, I'm a fan. That's my, I'm a Man United fan, but Henry, listen, that's King Henry. That's my number one. So when I, when I, when I that's you goal. feel his aura. Yeah. As a fan, we're sitting at home, a th thousand miles away. Yeah. What's it like being alongside him? You've actually scored a winner it's, against it's Arsenal. It's like, what's you, it like? looking, I, I'll tell you the truth. He's probably, I'm not, not in a bad way. I'm not phased by anything, but when you're, when I was next to him, you're like, like looking at him, is this, is this like your God? Is like, <laughs> is this, is this real? Like, yeah. are you actually mm. just standing there talking to me? Cause mm. he actually, after the game, he told me like, I wanted to give you my shirt. He mm. soon signed it for me. Like Marlon, keep up the good work. So mm. he obviously knew who I was, what That's I'm doing sweet. and what I'm achieving. That's hard. So I've got his shirt in a frame and everything like that. It's, it's sick. That's quality. So, that, that's mad. Like, That's quality. He's, he's up there. He's, mm. he's, he's there's just everything about him. That yeah. era was sort of my era. I'm watching him as a player, him and Birdcamp mm. and Van Nistelrooy and all them kind of players. They're Jogba, you're saying. Yeah. So I've got his shirt signed to me and nice. stuff like that. These are the people that I, I looked up to as a striker mm. and you, you want to be and try and replicate and watch them. So mm. I used to watch videos of all of them 
and I just wanted to try and do my best to, um, in my football career. One I wanted to ask was, who was the toughest defender you came up against? And not like the Terry Rio, yeah. everyone knows that, but like one that people might not know. Wes that Brown, you was like, bro, Wes Brown. When I come up against like, this brother, he is a problem. Yeah, Wes Brown, it was a problem. <laughs> Literally a problem. Slept on. He's, uh, so people don't realize how actually strong he is. Yeah. He was so strong. He can tackle. He just let you know as a player. Mm. He's just one of them center halves that knew how to deal with a, with a striker and how to put you off your game. And I was I was always looking over my back to see when that ball's coming into me, mm. I'm just always looking to see where he is because I know he's coming or coming to do something or nick it in front of you. Because I think that's clever from him learning his trade as a center half, mm. let you know straight off from the back when you get that ball you're in the game so yeah. you're, you're forever looking for where he is to put you off your game and he was one of them players that always i used to have battles with him and mm. it, it was good games but wes brown was up there mate with uh no, probably wes brown yeah. then like vincent company mm. he's another rock mm. like mm. you 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 feel him you know yeah. you know he's there when he's when you're trying to yeah. manhandle mm. him it don't don't work <laughs> so yeah. he's like he's up there no definitely would you say, so when we talk about your career, mm. what was the best period of your career? Would you say, what was your- It's hard, it? I have two, because yeah. obviously being a pro at an academy and you making your debut, that that for me is probably mm. at the top of, I, I always say West Ham, but when you're thinking about it now, making your debut yeah. is got to be the number one. Holy and then obviously yeah. my time at West Ham was was unbelievable mm. just for what we achieved and the caliber of player out there, the dressing room, like lads were there like hours before training, who's on the pitch, like playing foot golf and mm. stuff like that. And everyone was, they bought into what Pards was about and it, just the atmosphere there was yeah. unbelievable. The fans was, Amazing. Even to this day, the fans mm. are amazing at West Ham. Can't speak highly enough of them. On that, are you sad to see Upton Park go with it? Like, what's um, it like? Yes, I've been yes to and no. Stadium but a few times, you're like a million miles away from the pitch. Yeah, no, you know I, I, mean? I don't know. You know, because I, I like for I obviously like football. Like, for, like, for, <laughs> Sensor this one. <laughs> I like that. I like that. <laughs> you just put me on the spot there. Now. <laughs> Don't be honest. <laughs> no, but I, I, I think the Olympic Stadium is is uh, it's a next step. Mm. I think from Upton Park, um, it's it's the best place to go to. Um, obviously, the place is rocking now because the last two years West Ham have been doing unbelievable. Yeah. So the stadium just goes well out of the equation. Um, it's it, the last couple of games. It's the 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 atmosphere has been phenomenal. So yeah, I think uh, it it was time because obviously where they want to go, they they fill the stadium sixty. They can easily fill it mm -hmm. another again, really, because the the fan base that they've got. Um, but I am sad to see Upton Park because I've had some amazing memories yeah. there. But then I think for West Ham, the Olympic Stadium is a, is a is a is a good place to be mm -hmm. going to. What do you make of just put me on the spot? Yeah. <laughs> good PC answer. Yeah. What, do you make of, what do you think about um, the current West West Ham team? Who's yeah. that player in that current West Ham team where you're like, yeah, he's going to the top? Um, well, uh, Macau, Macau Antonio, he, he's just last well, couple of three years, now, he's just turned it on. He's just done so well. But all of them, mm. um, they've, they've literally found their formula, how they want to play and how they want to do things. Um, that Gaffer Moise, he's been got them playing mm. so well um like going into games as an ambassador when i'm doing my talks i feel feel so confident and it's nice to feel that that because that's where he's got them playing and how they how to do things that we're going to go in and win this game mm. you know, it feels good even mm. if they go like a goal down or two goals down you can see they're gonna they're gonna get a draw out of it or maybe go and nick the game mm. but they're, they're yeah. playing so well at the moment everyone's playing really well yeah 100%. <coughs> And and I was gonna say like, what do you expect this season? Because I know obviously when you was there as yeah. well, when the European season came, you saw how it affected the team. Yeah, this year, yeah, that you football. love but that. They're seeming like look they're, at you, they're look at you. You don't. <laughs> hey, listen, I'm, 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 Guy, I'm actually, I'm actually homework. good. Yeah, I'm yeah, actually yeah. Like, big productions. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, yeah, what? I mean, <laughs> 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 no, bring them in, see, bring them in. the effect European football has on a team. Yeah, Especially massively. when you're not playing it season in season yeah, yeah, out. It does. This season, it does. they seem to have taken well. It affected us. What do you think the expectations could be this year? Or what do you what do you hope for West Ham finish this season? Uh, well, they've bought well. Mm -hmm. So they've mm -hmm. got a squad that they can, it's just hopefully Moisey does it, um, looks after them. 
um, when they need to rest because mm. that's going to be so important and playing the right players at the right time because they've the first three games in uh, is it three games they played in Europe they've yeah. they've been phenomenal yeah. the first few games yeah. and but just, it's just a season's long so yeah, obviously it's, it's prolonging it could be sixty games prolonging yeah. that yeah mm -hmm. definitely and obviously um, Declan Rice mm. Sue Fowl you just talk about Thomas. Uh, Tuchek. Tuchek, he they're all internationals as well, yeah. playing week in, week out. So you're right, it, it does take a toll on them, but this is where you find out how they can manage that, mm. especially think, with cup I, games I as well. Moyes, after getting, since he's got the job again since last time, I don't know why, I feel like he's playing, managing with almost a point to prove. Yeah, yeah. I feel like. And yeah, yeah, one player I just wanted to ask you quickly on he's as well. Not, I like Declan Moyes, Rice. you know I like Moyes. <laughs> he, just, he, he shouldn't even got a sex at United, or too early. Mm, too early. Uh, Oli's, so Oli's getting this long, but sure Moyes can't get, this <laughs> Moyes can't get <laughs> yeah. one year, but Oli gets four. Yeah. Like, let me know. Hey, you're, you know you're, yeah. That's the next question. Yeah. Subscribe <laughs> underneath. <Yeah. laughs> just before we wrap up, well, I just wanted to get your thoughts on Decker's yeah. uh, this season as well. Declan Rice, like how we were saying over the last couple of weeks, how we've seen improvement season on season from yeah, a centre back to a defensive mid. This season, it's almost like he's a box to box midfielder getting involved in the final Scoring third. Goals, yeah. What have you made of kind of his progression and even the Euros tournament he had? Like, yeah, mate, he, he he's improved as the on. tournament yeah, went on. Yeah, he's gone on and gone on to to prove to people that he he's there to stay. But it, it, it's, it's going to be hard for West Ham, obviously, to keep him. Mm -hmm. They've done well to keep him this long here mm -hmm. now, um, and he, he he's true to West Ham. He wants to see this season out and do really well, but he has come on leaps and bounds. And I think playing with Nobes um, has helped him out. He's Big bro, little bro. Is, man, yeah, 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 he's yeah, literally yeah. He's learned off bro. learned off his trade, learned off him. And then obviously playing with Thomas is just, he's another level mm. of player and helped him out where they where they do things. And But he's, he's come on leaps and bounds to be fair. Mm. He's, wow. he's a proper statue now being captain and mm. he's just a proper leader, but he needs rests. So it's gonna yeah, be interesting. Yeah. We're not gonna do a whole 11, but yeah. I mentioned out there, five-a-side team. Oh, man. Of the players that you've played with. Yeah. Goalkeeper, one defender, yeah. two midfielders, one striker. Yeah. You, don't, you don't include yourself. Okay. Who would so, the five-a-side be? In goal, probably... Wow, mate, quick, let me just quick fire. Um, Shaka. His lot, yeah? Yeah. Mm. He's up just, there. Just because of... ESPN. Of five... Um, five-a-side team... Big mm. in goal, so he'll make yeah. the goal big, and he'll like he'll be. He, he, I think he'll be decent in the goal for me. And in defender, so one defender or two defender. If, if you so want to play you? two defender, you know I'm a bit of an offensive mind. <laughs> yeah, so I go to <laughs> the <laughs> midfield. Yeah. You, I don't know, but you, you could go if you want to go two defenders or one defender. It's up to you. Oh my god, you, you oh, kill me! I can't even do it. Okay, I'm gonna have to go for. Um, James Collins. James Ginge. Collins. Yeah. Mm. Real, was he? Because he's solid. Yeah. Yeah. Tom. And he just loves to let mm. you know. <laughs> Maybe because it's between him and Anton, but I think mm. James Collins just just picked it. Just how, just uh, how he is as a as a player. He's proper old school. Head it, kick it, and he he's got good feet as well. Yeah. Mm. And he can. He's got a great shot on him. Two midfielders. Two midfielders. One of them would have to be. Oh man, you're killing me you're now. You got Mascarano in it. You said Mas. Oh, yeah, it's gonna, five side, yeah it's gonna be. Yeah, this team's hard. a bit rigid. You said it's mash ready for a bit of flair in this yeah, team. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I need a bit of flair in this team. Yeah. <laughs> Looking a bit gonna defensive. To, yes. God, you're killing me now. Um, it's gonna have to be um, Yossi Benayou. Okay. Mm. Just to bend you on the left. And when he broke you man's heart. Yeah. Listen, he broke you man's heart. Yossi, Yossi Benio, but then you got then you got Stillian <laughs> Petrov, GB. Oh, These yeah. man names are just on a different mm, level. Mm. Big Baza. Wow. Milner. You have to go free. Oh, Ooh, young. Yo, yeah, that, that young Villa team yeah, was decent, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're, you're killing me here now, aren't you? Um, there was a few decent players. Just, even yeah, yeah, Melbourne, I think, again, Newcastle, you know, Lawson and... Yeah. I think I'm gonna go Stillian Petrov mm. in the middle. Techie. So Yossi left, Stillian Petrov in the middle. Team is starting to D make a bit more sense. Mm. Um, now up front. 
He said, you know, Teddy with the flicks. Yeah, there's Teddy, mm. but there's, then there's little Bushkin, Jermaine Defoe. This guy. <laughs> Jermaine Defoe, five aside. I can tell he'll score 100 goals. <laughs> this, this guy. Bro, you know them thrillers? <laughs> this, <laughs> this guy. <laughs> Bo- this guy can finish. Yeah. Mm. Like, it's got what was the phone? Was, was he? Because when I watch him, bro, like, there's a reason I support. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah. like that guy was a driller, but obviously doesn't get much attention any anymore. He's at no. Rangers bro, and stuff. But what, yeah, now, yeah. yeah. Rangers, but he's a proven goal scorer. Always was yeah. he like? What was he like as a player? Relentless, mm. literally relentless in in training, shooting, scoring. He's probably your partner, worst partners. Um, how can I say it? You know, if you're playing up two up front mm. and you've got another partner mm. that you know is going to, every time is going to shoot, that's Jermaine <laughs> yeah. Defoe. Oh, yeah. All, yeah. Ma- all yeah, crazy. No, all crazy <laughs> angles. You just got to prepare yourself that that's what he's going to do. Yeah. And to be fair, nine times out of 10, he done it and scored. It's a goal yeah. scorer, man. So that's, that's how, club? yeah. He, yeah, the Premier League. Is it 150 <sighs> club, right? I don't, that's he's how. In the, 50. He's in the 100 club. Mm, yeah, he's, yeah, he's definitely, definitely in the 100 club. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's somewhere. But he's somewhere. one of them players that he, he can he can score mm, in his finish. Yeah. So he, he will be my little Yeah, that's a good team. Finish. The tech. James Collins got his work cut out. Because Benny Yu is not defending for him. Neither is the phone. You know what I mean? But uh, Petra so, will do the graph. Petra, yeah, yeah, box, true. Box. Yeah. yeah, true. And lastly, song, you know, there's you, you see Carlton in the media. Uh, you see like a lot of ex-pros, Joe Cole, all these type of guys in, yeah, the, in the media. Yeah. Are you looking to, you're yeah, looking to I get have, into like- Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do yeah, yeah, quite yeah. a fit. I, I, yeah. I do quite a bit. Obviously, with my, it's hard with my business because I'm everywhere, but I try and get on Sky or BT yeah. to try and do a bit of commentary and try and- learn my trade in that sense in the media stuff because mm. I do I do like doing that yeah. obviously the more you do the more comfortable you get the more you can get taught mm. like you guys because yeah, 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 you, yeah. you two are like yeah. experts <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm, I'm, lo- I'm loving what I'm hearing and seeing so it's like Sky Sports come on <laughs> yeah, you guys yeah. like they're, 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 they're no, buzzing so yeah but, I try try do my yeah. do my best like being in it you got your fingers in a lot of pies as well because you're yeah. coaching at Nottingham Forest as well, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Under 16s. But I, I, tr- I do I, when I go in. I got I got quite a nice role that they've given me. I just go in and see w- w- different age groups and out. yeah, and go and talk to them, help out and stuff, which which is nice yeah. really. And is is that something you want to get into long later term? on? Yeah, I'd yeah, love to. Coaching, yeah, go managing. into yeah, just keep my my badges topping up. Um, just at the moment doing my A license, finishing that off. Um, but yeah, I just I like going in and try and help out and keep my my nose in and keep my there my coaching skills up. That. So it's we just need nice. That. More um, black managers, yeah. definitely. Yeah, I was just about to say on, definitely last, going in. on the last note. Um, obviously it's Black History Month right yeah. now. Yeah. What is your opinion on like you know some people are taking the knee, yeah. some are not. Yeah. What's your kind of stance on that? Yeah, it's hard, really, because um, I've I've never I'll say this. No, I know obviously as a black person, it is, it's it's hard as a young lad growing up because I, I know what it's like. Because mm. you had to, no disrespect to anybody else, mm. you, you, I had to work harder than anyone else. That's how I felt Thanks. growing up. So wherever I was, I had to be polite, manners. That's, mm. that's how I am. I, I respect people, look after them as much as I can. And when it's time to work, I have to be better than you, mm. no matter what, even though we're good friends, I'm just, yeah. sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna be better than you. Mm. That's that's how I was, my yeah. mentality. Mm. And I look after people as much as possible. Um, that, that was just my my mentality mm. throughout my career, to even to this day. Um, I do my utmost best for anyone mm. I can help them out. But I know what you're saying, it's the knee. Mm. I think I, I like the knee because it, every time they take the knee, it 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 remembers what they're doing it for. Because like if they didn't do it, it'd just be going along, going along, and everything would just be mm. the same. It's like, but it's repetition. It's just putting it out there still mm. and letting people know that there, right. there's still problems. There's mm-hmm. still problems after what's been going on with England and mm. continual lads and stuff. How it goes with yeah. not just black people, just in everyone in general, the the whole nation mm. of races and stuff like that so take a knee i think it's good mm. um you just it just remembers you and just um, what's the word sorry what like it just re-emphasizes the yeah what, again, what's yeah. happening so yeah. it just keeps telling you that it, it's there yeah. it's still there mm. that's why i think it's good um, I know other people have different opinions, not doing it, mm. but I think it, it's something needs to be done and that that is doing it. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I agree. agree. But listen, guys, that was 
sick episode of <laughs> Stoppage <laughs> Time <laughs> TV. No, you thank you. Make sure you like, bro. share, subscribe, turn on the notifications. Marlon, appreciate yes. you coming thank you, on. Thank you. Thank really you. appreciate that, man. All the best for the thank future. You. No, and that is another episode of Stoppage Time. We are out.